Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg and this is where we make hard candy here at Lofty Pursuits. And we're currently working on the Tangerine Sours and this is the latest episode in our Tangerine Sour video. And just as a spoiler, everything's done. We got the first tin of finished candy. We got the candy in it. We even have the candy pads, but I'm gonna tell you all about that in a bit. Last episode, we talked to you about the challenges that we had left to solve. And some of them were fairly easy. The sticker for the back arrived finally, and I think it looks great. It meets all the nutritional requirements, has our barcode on it all set. The candy pad we we're looking for, the multi-layered one to act as cushioning for shipping in the can. It's food safe and it has the Lofty Pursuits logo on it in gold on brown. I think it looks great. It fits nicely into the bottom of the can and protects the candy just fine down there. And uh, that was a big deal because that was hard to have made and they ran late on that. But the big challenges were the acid and the shrink wrapping. The shrink wrapping was based off power and the acid was based off grinding. So the malic acid wasn't grinding right. So we had to find a solution. A lot of you gave us some good suggestions, but some of them just didn't work out because of food code. We talked about wanting to use a ball grinder, and a ball grinder is a tumbling cylinder with metal balls in it that grinds the acid to a fine powder, or anything else for that matter, is used for gunpowder. It's essentially a rock polishing machine, but none of those are food safe. So you can get rock polishing machines very cheaply, but they're typically lined with neoprene, and so are the gunpowder tumblers. But neither of those would be good and food safe, and I gotta tell you, neoprene has a flavor which transfers, so it just wouldn't be good. So we couldn't use that, which led us to have to build our own. All it is is a tumbling food safe container with stainless steel balls in it. And for that, we've got this. This is an old mayonnaise jar with some rubber bands on the side, and I think you can see we have a hundred half-inch metal balls in here, and we have the malic acid. And all we have to do now is take it for a spin. Fortunately, we already have a powered machine that rolls things. In this case, candy, but it can work for everything else. In this case, it's a batch roller, and I'm just rolling it using some rubber bands on the edge of this mayonnaise jar. And it tumbles just great and every time those balls go down they're hitting each other the balls or rolling past each other and when they abrade past each other they're crushing what's between them this is exactly how a um, mortar and pestle works it's just mechanized and all we have to do is let this thing tumble long enough and the material comes out beautifully and the results are great it's about the consistency of talcum powder or confectioner sugar. And it started out the consistency of salt. And once we tumble the candy in it using the pan, a panning machine that we've shown you before, the coating comes out wonderfully. And looks the way I think it looks in the old photographs and the people who've seen this coating say, it tastes right and it looks right. And it's a good sour, which is exactly what we want on the outside of this. So the next problem was the heat shrink machine. I thought it was just electrical. But when I looked at it, I realized I've never heard of a 110 60 amp circuit, which is what it called for putting in. Usually you go to 220 at that point and lower the amperage because volts times amps equals watts. So I couldn't get that working. And I'm currently in discussions with the people who made the machine to see if there's a solution. But frankly, I think I've been taken. But it also posed another problem that I didn't know about at the time I ordered the machine, because I ordered the machine before the shrink and the cans came in. And look at this shrink ring here. You see how it goes above the can and not below it if it's on a flat surface? If it ran through that machine, it would just curl over the top and not curl over the bottom. The whole thing would be able to pull off at any time. You want it to shrink over the top and bottom, which means it needs to be off a flat surface. So I built this. This is made out of uh, some leftover wood from a cabinet project that has is pre-finished, so it made it easy. Cut a disc of wood up here. I have a motor that I already had, which by the way came from Rex Engineering in Titusville, Florida, because it's a great motor made here in Florida. Shout out to Florida, where we're located. And I epoxied to the top of this pulley that was already on the thing, a uh, disc of wood, a little spacer, and a pair of magnetic strips that came off the back of an ID tag I had laying around, or a couple of them. So it's basically things I had laying around, and I added to that a foot pedal, like a sewing machine, 
that I use for all sorts of stuff and just plugged it into it so we have some good foot control. So this goes on. The plastic now goes above and below the tin. And when we get this going, it shrinks perfectly. And we have a perfect tin. People asked about it getting hot because of the heat gun. There's not a lot of heat going on this, and the metal radiates it so fast that just during the past couple of seconds since I take, took the heat gun off, it has returned to room temperature. There isn't enough heat to go through to the candy itself. So we've got a finished package of it, which means we're now ready to go. We've already got orders from our Patreon subscribers. Those are going out first, and we're gonna see how that goes before we do the next one, because I learned something about tangerine sours through the tasting and through doing more research. They change the formula during the production. They change their acid levels. So are we going to be right in the way we duplicate the memory of this candy? Well, yeah, because it's a memory. But there's no possible way, it appears, for us to do it because everybody's memory is going to be different. And that makes it fun. So we're going to call this version 1.0. I'm not promising I'm not going to change the levels. But because of the feedback I got, we went to this level from a bunch of choices. And all sorts of people chimed in. Okay, I got a real big blast of sour there. Oh, that was good. <laughs> ah, there's the sour. <laughs> Sorry for the um, eating noises. So, the blast of sour that you get right at the beginning. I know that they've kind of finalized that, but it's that's exactly what I remember. It gives that kind of blast of sour, and then it fades into that kind of orange citrusy note. Um, mm, that's very good. And my mom had a very like strict rule that we couldn't eat in our rooms. And so we would hide the tins of these in our boxes of Legos. What I remember about the tangerine sours is that eating them, it's an initial pop of sour that mellows out into a uh, sweetness. I think the tangerine flavor is right on. I think the initial sour bite is right on, especially with that more powderized uh, malic acid. For the record, I will be consuming all of these candies and I will not be sharing them with any of my family. Wow. Because <laughs> of the ridges, you find like little pockets of extra sour and it hits you when you're not expecting it. The eternal question is, when are you gonna be able to get yours? And we're doing this in a cycle because this is proving to be more popular than we ever expected. So we're trying to keep production under control. The first batches went to our Patreon subscribers. The second batches will be released to our podcast listeners. The third batch will be released to our regular customers who've already placed orders with Lofty Pursuits. And then they'll go open to the general public. That way we're hoping we're going to be able to keep production under control. Actually, the first batch for our Patreon subscribers have already opened and closed, and those guys are going to get them shipped hopefully by Friday, tomorrow. So uh, Monday on the outside. And we have these all ready to go. This is number one, and uh, I want to thank everyone who's given us feedback for this because it's just been an amazing project. It's been the type of thing that could only exist with the Internet, and it was a whole lot of fun. So thank you for your participation from the art to the candy to giving me your thought processes, which helped a lot. And I hope you enjoyed my thought processes as well. If you want to see more of these videos, become a Patreon subscriber. These strange ones are paid for by that. If you'd like to try our candy, go to www.pd.net and order our candy. We ship around the world. This will be up soon. Um, if you want to find out when it's going to be up, if you're not in one of the earlier categories, join our email list on our website, www.pd.net, and check it out. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more updates. And of course, if you're in Tallahassee, we're right off I-10 at the Thomasville Road exit. Come and visit us in person. We're open seven days a week. We make candy an awful lot right out front, which is why we call it Public Displays of Confection. You may get a chance to see it, and you may not, but you can try, and the rest of the store is cool too. So thank you for listening to this. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe to us here on YouTube and ring that bell.